Prior to World War II, the United States of America were an isolationist nation. However, certain events led them to come out of isolationism, and they soon became heavily involved with World War II. Germany's attack on France leading to its eventual collapse, the Battle of Britain, the rebuilding of the economy with the building of the United States military, the Lend-Lease Act in which America gave massive benefits to the Allied forces, America's assistance in the Battle of the Atlantic, and the individual impact which led to the United States declaring war on Japan. When Germany finished invading Poland, they decided to test new military tactics on the western side of Europe. Hitler would use what is known as Blitzkrieg to conquer the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. They were able to capture these countries in a few short months using his tactics, which were seen as effective and very efficient. Germany was able to conquer land faster than anyone could have ever thought possible. Countries underestimate Germany because of the hit they took with the Treaty of Versailles, but it seems they are stronger than ever. When the Nazis invaded France, they used swift attacks to their weak defenses, and soldiers were walking in Paris after they surrendered. They surrendered because they felt they wouldn't be able to match his force and wanted to uphold the capital. France would go under Nazi power for about four years until the liberation of France in 1944. From July of 1940 to October 31st, 1940, would be the Battle of Britain. This battle was primarily fought by British, by Britain's aerial support as well as German Germany's Luftwaffe. Göring was the German Air Force commander, and he started sending his troops to hit Britain, since they refused a peace treaty that would have them surrender. When the Luftwaffe arrived in Britain, the RAF was waiting for them. With, with Britain's new use of radar, they were able to locate where they were going to be attacking. Britain held their ground until a bomb hit London, the capital of Britain. Winston Churchill was furious, and the very next day, he sent planes to bomb Berlin. With the United States' help in sending them supplies and resources, Britain was able to win the Battle of Britain and help turn the tide of the war. Britain's determination and courage defeated uh, the German Air Force. The, Britain sol the British soldiers that survived went back up in the air with a new plane and new supplies. Some would have broken bones and demand to be put back up in the air to fight. The German Air Force had sirens, so they drove down. So when they drove down, you could hear banshee-like screams that rained terror over their enemies. In addition to the fall of France and the Battle of Britain, America started bolstering their defenses to give to the UK and other allied nations and to protect themselves if they were to formally enter World War II. In a failed economy during the Great Depression, the most important thing to do at this time was to rebuild the economy. Within days of Germany's attack on Poland, the United States military grew to 227,000 soldiers. Because of impending war efforts, factories, especially automobile factories, began producing trucks, jeeps, tanks, and also built artillery, rifles, mines, helmets, pontoon bridges, and dozens of other pieces of military equipment. Due to all of these products being produced and bought, and by creating jobs for people who needed them, the economy started to skyrocket once again. Not only had the economy skyrocketed, but now that we had all these weapons and vehicles in addition to over 227,000 soldiers and growing, the US really decided to strengthen their military power. Soldiers had taken aptitude tests, and after doing so, they each went to basic training camps. Here, they learned how to handle weapons, load backpacks, read maps, pitch tents, and dig trenches. Throughout these drills, teamwork was seen as an important part of building the U.S. defenses, as they also learned how to work as a team. When the German Blitzkrieg 
swept into France in May 1940, President Roosevelt declared a national emergency and announced a plan to build 50,000 warplanes a year. Two months later, he asked Congress for $4 billion to build a two-ocean navy. Passed on March 11, 1941, the Lend-Lease Act set up a system that would allow the United States to lend or lease war supplies to any nation deemed vital to the defense of the United States. During World War II, the United States began to provide significant military supplies and other assistance to the Allies in September 1940, even though the United States did not enter the war until December 1941. Britain alone was loaned over $1 billion due to the amount of resources that the U.S. had issued them during World War II. The United States provided the Soviet Union, who had just become allies following the breaking of the non-aggression pact by Germany, with over 400,000 jeeps and trucks, 14,000 aircrafts, 8,000 tractors and construction vehicles, and 13,000 battle tanks. Without the United States donating slash loaning to the UK, there's no way of knowing whether or not they would have collapsed. Loaning to the UK was the best thing that could have happened because the government had practically gone bankrupt. The US contributing to the war efforts likely saved the UK from collapse. At the start of World War II, America was helping out Britain. Instead of selling them guns and other weapons, they would lend them everything that they needed. They although they still expected payment later on after the war was over. In fall of 1941, only a few months before America would join the war, we were involved with assisting the Canadians as well as the British. We escorted ships to the Northwest Atlantic Ocean, and the United States Navy fought multiple battles with U-boats a little to the west of Iceland, where it had made forward outposts. On December 7, 1941, Japan decided to bomb Pearl Harbor. Because of this, President Roosevelt declared war on Japan. Shortly after, because Japan and Germany were allies, Germany declared war on the United States. On December 7, 1941, just before 8 a.m., hundreds of Japanese fighter planes descended on the base, where they managed to destroy or damage nearly 20 American naval vessels including eight battleships and over 300 airplanes. More than 2,400 Americans died in the attack, including civilians and another 1,000 people were wounded. Japan's goal was to destroy the Pacific Fleet. That way, the Americans would not be able to fight back as Japan's armed forces spread across the South Pacific. The USS Arizona, USS Oklahoma, USS California, USS West Virginia, USS Utah, USS Maryland, USS Pennsylvania, USS Tennessee, and USS Nevada had all sustained, sustained significant damage. On December 8th, the US declared war on Japan. This led to Germany and Italy declaring war on the US three days later. Eventually, this would backfire as Germany, Japan, and the Axis powers would fall. Throughout researching for this project, questions that arose were, if the United States hadn't entered World War II, would the Allied powers have ultimately still won? How would World War II be affected if the US had entered the war sooner? If the United States hadn't supported Britain, would they have fallen? Why had Roosevelt chosen to not get involved in the war sooner? Why did the US choose to give other countries so much money worth of vehicles and weapons 